proud sponsors of the Cars Ireland YouTube channel. Cartel.ie For car history data you can trust. Buying a used car? Get an exclusive coupon code now. See the comments section for more details. Hello and welcome back to the Cars Ireland YouTube channel and today is a very wet and miserable last day in September but do we have a treat for you. We have two premium mid-sized electric SUVs to test. I have the Audi Q4 e-tron and this particular model is in geezer blue. Geyser blue? All right geezer. All right geezer and I'd say it's inoffensive. There is also a nice press color which is this deep purple with some black aero alloys. That looks really well, and I am a sucker for those ones. But yeah, inoffensive. What a view, should You I? really wanted that purple car. I really want it? purple cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mercedes and Audi meet again here because I have here with me the Mercedes-Benz EQA, which is the cheapest way into a fully electric Mercedes, although cheap is a relative term, as we'll chat about later. Yes. As you can see, it's very closely related to the GLA that we had on test not too long ago. It's the same shape, in fact, but a few little differences like this cool blanked out grille. You've got the blue eyelashes on the headlights. There's a light bar that runs across the black and a couple of EQA badges. This one is the EQA 250, which is the entry level model, powered by a 66.6 kilowatt hour battery and good for 423 kilometers on the WLTP cycle. So it starts at about 56,000 euro in this progressive trim. There aren't too many optional extras on this one, bar some nice cream leather upholstery, this metallic paint, mountain gray metallic, in case you were wondering, and some cool Mercedes puddle lights, keeping it safely under the current 60,000 euro limit for government grants. But I think we might leave that grant shot till later in the video when we're sitting down because, woo, yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot. That's, that's a deep dive, yeah. a deep discussion. We'll get into it. Yeah, and if you'd like to search Cars Ireland for any car, be it an electric SUV or anything in between from over 1,200 dealers, please do click on the link above. Will we get into it? Yes, let's have a look inside. So boot on the Q4 and as you pointed out, you have a light bar, so do I. See, very lovely nice. light bar, I do like very that. futuristic. 520 litres. That's good. Yeah, and if you drop those seats down, it's like 1,500 litres. You have a little floor for your leads and all those bits and bobs typical of an EV. And a few hooks, and that's it. It's a good boot, I'll let you tailgate. No. Oh. Close Shame. it yourself. Shame. Let's go. <laughs> now. The boot on the EQA is not its strongest point. You do lose quite a lot of space to the battery pack underneath, leaving it at 340 litres, which is smaller than most hatchbacks. And to be honest, I have really felt that this week. Even trying to fit a very lightweight stroller in there was a bit of a hassle. Now for shopping and stuff, not so much because it is still nice and wide. You've got barely any load lip. But for an SUV, it is quite a bit smaller than the standard GLA, which I think people should be aware of. But if space isn't a huge priority, it's finished very nicely. It is still very usable. You've got a couple of handy touches here, shopping bag hooks, your light, and a very luxurious electric tailgate. Where the hell did you get that jacket? I felt like I was missing out because you have the Cars Ireland jacket. <laughs> you're jealous of my Cars yeah. Ireland jacket. Are you not jealous of my high-vis jacket? Um, no. <laughs> okay, so back of the bus. What did your six foot self think of the head and leg room in the back of the EQA? As you can see from the camera, I'm perfectly comfortable back there. There is a decent middle leg room, good headroom, really cool cup holders, and I believe you have a gripe with the USB. I do. Did you notice there's only one of them? I did. And there's clearly space for yeah. two. What's that about? <laughs> I don't know. Are they trying Stingy. to cause arguments yeah, between your will. passengers in the back? Kids. I just, I just, I would love to have been there at that decision-making process. Like, oh, we'll only give them one. If we give them two, it might go over the grand threshold. That probably was the discussion, <laughs> in fairness, in fairness. <laughs> So, front of the cabin. Now, the EQA interior is pretty much the GLA interior, which we had yes, a not few too weeks long ago. ago. But um, for anyone who hasn't watched that video, you should, by the way, pop a link up here. Yeah, pop a link, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Then, I see, I think that this car is going to appeal to a slightly different market. Perhaps someone who's considering an EV but hadn't quite considered Mercedes yet, because in fairness to them, they are lashing out the EV. They really are, it's just constant. They're electrifying their full fleet at lightning speed. Mm. Like lightning. Uh, lightning. Like his electricity. <laughs> yes. And they've got a few biggies on the way next year as well. Such US, as? for example. Uh, that's a biggie, Yeah, you yeah. like that one, don't you? 
<laughs> but yeah, I think it's an interesting approach that Mercedes are taking and that they're electrifying their current range rather than building stuff from the ground up. Yes. Now, obviously that does come with limitations. As we've seen, the, the boot space in this one has taken a hit because it's kind of, that's where it's gone. Fair so, hit, fair <laughs> the, hit. The cars are the shape they are and you're slightly limited in that respect. But I do like the, the normalness of it and the fact that they're just being quite laid back about it and being like, look, it's just an extra powertrain. And you're now going to have the option of electric, of but electric you can still winning. drive what you want to drive. And you can drive an electric car without driving a fridge freezer. It's not a dig at the Q4, no, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> it's not a fridge freezer. So let me show you around the cabin of the EQA a little bit. And I think you'll see that the main focal point of this cabin and most new Mercedes cabins is this double screen MBMX yeah. infotainment system. It's lovely. I'm a big fan of both how this looks and how it works. It might seem overwhelming at first. It does look like an awful lot of information there, but it's quite an easy system to use. It's quite intuitive. And you've also got a double option because it's both a touchscreen and you can also use it via this touchpad uh, okay. in the center here. And With the most random piece of interior trim ever. That, my friend, is a wrist. <laughs> I'm not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me buddy, buddy. That, my friend, is a wrist um, rest. rest. It's a, a wrist, wrist rest. rest. That's yeah. easy to say. It's, do you know what? Now that I've had one, I'm not sure I could live without one. Really? Yeah. You might have to, though. <laughs> I've said it before, I'll say it again. You can't beat Mercedes for a bit of cabin ambiance. No, it's lovely. Got some really nice lighting options. Um, you've got good amount of storage in very logical places. The uh, center console down here is nice and streamlined because they've obviously saved space by popping, well, not that they popped it because Mercedes have been doing this for a long time, but your, yeah. your gear selector is on a stock behind the steering wheel. Yeah. You'll also notice the cream leather interior on this one, which believe it or not, is only 170 euro to option. Tick. I definitely would because yeah. it really lifts it in here. And as I said, it's practically the only option in here. And this entry level model, the progressive trim, does come suitably well equipped for the price tag. Doesn't the, feel entry. No, it's not no. at all. The entry level spec is really quite impressive. You've got your 18 inch alloy wheels, your double screen infotainment setup. You've got a reversing camera. You've got heated seats, cruise control, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Um, there's some really good safety bits as well, like lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring. There's nothing really you'd go looking for. No, you don't need to really, do you? Now, the AMG line package might well make it look a bit sportier on the outside. But personally, I think that blanked out grille already kind of makes it feel a bit more special. So I'm not sure it would be worth losing your 5K grant over. No, definitely not. Um, I think in this case, now, and is that grant going to exist for much longer? We're talking about grants again, aren't we? Should yeah. we just dive into that? Yeah, we just, just let's get it really in get in Let's go to that car for We yeah. need a change of scenery. We'll do it. Okay, so the grant discussion, the dreaded grant discussion. We're in for a treat here, aren't we? Yeah, because yeah. these cars are really on the border, aren't they? They're on the border and like, so we'll get into this. Okay, yeah. our finance guy, everybody. <laughs> oh no, no. Yeah, so if you spend under 40,000 euro, you can get VRT relief of 5,000 euro. Okay. If you spend between 40 and 50,000 euro, you can get VRT relief at a reduced rate. Okay. I don't know exactly what that is. That's what it says on the government website, reduced rate. Okay. <laughs> Whatever Less. that means. Less, yeah, exactly. And anything over 50,000 euro, you're not getting any relief. Okay. Yeah. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> Sticking out Flanders. Okay, so where do we go on the SEAI grant so? Five grand mm -hmm. if you spend under 60. Anything over 60, no grants. Okay, and where does that leave us with this particular model? This exact model or just the e-tron in general? Give me an overview. Okay, I'll give you an overview. So the range of prices for a Q4 e-tron is between 40 and about 63 before you take any boxes. Okay, that 40 surely has a smaller battery though. It does, yeah. It's I can do that. How small? <laughs> 55 kilowatts. Oh, that's not bad. It's not, it's not bad. So range is like 350. That also has less power. Now we are in the bigger battery, more power, and we're actually in the entry level price point. So it's advanced sport and S line, and we are in the advanced model. Okay. Which starts at like 55,000 euro with that longer range, but this one has been extra up with lots of options. Okay. So I shall propose a game. Yes, I, like I have this. a list here of my options. I'm going to see if you can guess them. Yes, I like this game. Yeah. So interior package, mm -hmm. split folding rear seats, steering wheel with elements in chrome look, 
Is it scoff steering wheel itself an option? <laughs> no, that's, that's still there. Right. Scuff plates with aluminium inserts, accents for painted with glossy black, interior in aluminium look. What would you pay for that? Okay, so it's very aesthetic. I would say uh, a thousand euro. <laughs> 2679. Stop that. Yeah. Uh, ambient lighting package. 600 euro. 322. Oh, so you double bargain. that, that's a bargain, okay. yeah. Uh, MMI navigation. So the virtual cockpit and that. And this, right, I'm, oh, that's going to be a pricey one. That'll be 1500. Two. 2000. It also has the that camera was... based traffic sign recognition. Oh, okay. Yeah. Assistance package, which is lane departure warning, parking aid plus cruise control. Much. Should be standard on a 55,000 euro car, but yeah, I'm really going to go should. safety 1200. 423. Okay, well. Yeah. Just two more left. Safety package plus. So lane change assist, pre-sense warning, and pre-sense front, whatever that means. So the rest of the safety kit, yeah, they should have got a standard, got and another 400 euro. 1300 euro. <laughs> yeah, I don't, so I don't know how to make it up. <laughs> and then the last one, storage and luggage compartment package, net partition. Oh, stuff they're not charging for it. It sounds like it, yeah. Oh, like 20 euro. 423 euro. I want to <clears> see that net again. So all in. 63153 for this one. So you're not getting the grants anymore. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. It's uh, steep, isn't it? Yeah. It does look well though. It is very, very pleasant, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's a good interior. It's sophisticated and just elegant. I love the wraparound effect. Yeah, I do. I do. The only thing I don't like is this steering wheel. Not a fan. It's not great. It's flat it? bottom, flat top, and it's kind of like a bus it's steering very wheel. It's skinny or something. It's odd. It's And it's actually not. I don't know, I don't like it, but it does nicely frame the virtual cockpit. Oh, that which is Which is always great on all Audis, it's just one of the best. Yeah, loving our virtual cockpit. Then you have your infotainment, obviously, which is also, I mean, it's really good. Like, quick, looks well, HD, and it's got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, if you much prefer that. And mercifully, we have switches for the air conditioning. Nice. And they're good, chunky switches. Do you like my floating center console? I do, that's cool. Yeah. Although it does have the volume control, which is a bit odd. The give with the switches here, mm. take away with the volume How control. How does that work? Can I try You here? have to slide your finger over and back on the pad to turn the volume up. Like a dial would have fit there yeah. so perfectly. I don't get it. They're just forcing something that doesn't need to be done. And this, is this a bit intrusive? The like, floating? I mean, the floating does it need to take up that much room? I kind of like it. You know, you can put your phone underneath and it's not distracting. Okay. You're not looking at your phone. Fair point. Just justifying my little shelf here. Okay. We have two USB-C. Two, must be nice to have two. Yeah. And How's you, life with your new adapter? Yeah, you treated me to an adapter. Yeah. Oh, you're just so nice. Game changer, It's great. It? Yeah, I feel like so futuristic. Uh, two cup holders, armrest, leather seats. It's really comfy, it's really nice. And one thing I do like is the e-tron badge. Despite spending 63,000 euro, yeah. no reverse camera, and this is not adaptive cruise control, it's just Oh, come Standard on, so in your two school. grand MMI thingy, you didn't get a reversing camera. Right? Yeah, it's just... And you don't have an electric boot lid? No, I don't. And there's no USB ports in the back? Not one. So seven grand worth of options and those are still missing. Yeah. Oh yeah, actually, we actually forgot about the back. We did. I was very comfortable back there. Were you? Way, and there was a lot more space in the back of this than there is in the Yeah, EQ. it does look roomier. Yeah, but yeah, no USB. And there is good folders though. But do they pop out? No. They're not, it's fancy. Disappointing. Shall we take it for a spin? So, the Q4 e-tron Advance Long Range. Yes. On the road. Long Range is a Tesla thing, Sinead. Oh my oh, God, sorry. you can't say that for Audi. Okay, what do we say? We, I don't know what 40? we say. 40, yeah. Okay. 35 is the last one, this is 40, so it's longer. So, we have an 82 kilowatt hour battery. We have 204 horsepower, and we have a no 200 kilometers an hour time of 8.5 seconds. Not bad. Yeah, all good numbers. And I suppose the first thing everyone asks about an EV is range. Mm -hmm. And because we have that larger battery, the quoted WLTP maximum range is 511 kilometers. How likely you are to get that is probably a video for another day because I don't think you will unless you really commit to like granny driving and really EV suited stuff. Yeah, I do think your driving style probably is, uh, adapts over time. Probably, you probably do like just ease back just to yeah. get a bit more out of it. Because but it's also massively dependent on the, 
the circumstance. Massively, and I did experience that myself after collecting it. My typical motorway journey is 120 kilometers an hour uh, for 80 kilometers. And when I picked it up, it had a range of 500 kilometers. So that was obviously based on whoever had been driving it previous and what they might have got. But when I took it out on the motorway, it was very heavy on that range. And I got home with just, just over 300 left. Wow, so, so it did not quite a bit off. It seems, it seems inefficient at those speeds. It spent 200 kilometers on an 80 kilometer journey. Yeah. That last person must have been driving it around a car park. I think they were a saint. <laughs> I think they just totally understood the... That's interesting. The job, yeah, isn't it? And what about weather conditions like today? Have See, yeah, that's the other side of it. We're kicking into winter now and EVs don't like the cold that no. much. Which, fair enough, I don't either. Me Would you like it? Would you like going fast at minus 10 degrees? No. No. But anyway, speaking of going fast, it is actually quite enjoyable to drive and a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And I think that might be down to what is a turn up for the books. It's a rear wheel drive Audi. Right. Yeah, so you're that in very awesome. special company if you buy a Q4 e-tron. I think the only other ever rear wheel drive Audi was an R8 RWS. So like, it's basically a supercar. Basically? Basically a Maybe supercar. Maybe a little bit heavier. A slight bit heavier. I think it's like two and a half Maybe tons. Maybe a bit slower. Yeah, quite a bit slower. Not as sexy as well as an R8. <laughs> um, but I think some of that DNA might have rubbed off because it's actually very enjoyable to drive. And I do think maybe it's the rear wheel drive and it just helps with understeer and deals with that weight a bit better maybe. I'm not sure of the specifics, but whatever way you look at it, it's very competent and a really fun drive. It does feel very balanced. That's the word. Mm. That is definitely the word. It's balanced. It's not understeer and it handles that mass really well for what it is. Obviously, this is all within the remit of a very heavy electric SUV, the enjoyment. There aren't too many family SUVs that are like a last minute to drive petrol or otherwise, so. No. Maybe the Lamborghini Urus. Oh yeah, we'll have to get that yes. on test, won't we? That'll be next. <laughs> um, also charging. So you can charge up to 125 kilowatts and that'll do like 5% to 80% in 35, 38 minutes, something like that. That's impressive. Mine is actually limited to 100 kilowatt hours. Okay, but you can't find yeah, that too exactly. easily anyway. Exactly, this is the thing, isn't it? This is the crux of it. It, it might be able to do it, but will you be able to find a charger to facilitate that? And is it ever likely? Yeah. Because we're not even going to have enough electricity over the next five winters for just as we're going now. So oh how dear. the hell are they supposed to charge a load of electric cars? Oh dear, we spent so long avoiding Grand Chat and now we're going into the T-Energy Yeah, well, crisis. we have to. We what have about to. that fuel crisis, eh? This will come up in the comments if we don't do it. <laughs> So imagine everyone charging, what do we need? A million electric cars on the road by 2030? Anyway, will we drive your car? Yes. So this is the EQA250, powered, as I mentioned earlier, by a 66.6 .6 kilowatt hour battery, which is good for 423 kilometers in the WLTP range. Now there is an EQA300 and an EQA350, which will push out 230 and 290 brake horsepower, respectively. Nice. This, however, is front wheel drive only and can still manage a respectable 190 HP. So as for the 420-ish kilometer range, well, I managed after a full charge of about 390. Now, it would be quite typical to drop those, those few kilometers. Mm. And what I've seen from that 390 seems to be quite an accurate depiction of what I'm actually driving as in. The kilometers are coming off quite accurately. It was performing well around town and the suburbs in particular, I think it was averaging about 18 and a half kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which would put that at about 360, I think, quite achievable. Now, that is, as we know, massively, massively dependent on outside conditions. And the conditions were really bad today. It was bucketing down rain for the most part. So you're talking wipers in full swing, air con, heated seats, because, you know, I like to be comfortable. That's right and that had quite a negative impact on the range. Not outrageously so. I mean, I think the highest I saw the consumption climb to was about 21, which would reduce that range to around the 320 mark. But look, these circumstances are probably few and far between. Yeah, that is quite interesting because my Q4 is actually averaging the same long-term consumption as this at 18.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. 
Okay. So is, is the maths on that if you just divide the size of your battery by the 18 That's what I do, and multiply yeah. by 100. But is it the usable battery or the full battery? The usable battery, I would imagine. Okay. Right, so if I have a usable battery of 77 kilowatt hours, mm -hmm. and I do 18.4, that's about 411 kilometers of range, I think. Okay, impressive. Yeah. Now, quick maths, and a really boring section. <laughs> Indeed, moving on. <laughs> moving on, very quickly. As for what the EQA is like to drive, I think I mentioned this before in our recent GLA plug-in review that I really am a fan of Mercedes E-Power. I think it's got a really nice feel to it. Now, unfortunately, in that car, I was limited to 40 or so kilometers per charge. Whereas in this one, I get to enjoy it all day long or all night long, depending on, on when you're all driving. Night long. And I, th I think my favorite thing about it is that there's a lightness to it um, in that despite the extra weight of that battery, the car doesn't ever really feel like cumbered by it. Some other EVs are so heavy that you get this kind of sludgy driving through water effect. Whereas this one, I just really enjoy the normality of it. I'm getting the e-golf vibes again where you know it doesn't feel massively different to driving the standard GLA yeah it's very comfortable it's very smooth it and is like and it, and it still has quiet. all the refinement that you'd expect mm. from Mercedes which is a very I think it's it's, it's a very well balanced car like the e-tron yeah suspension is very well judged I mean it's just like glides along basically it does yeah it's very nice now you do get quite a bit of wind noise at motorway speeds but i think they're more just accentuated by how quiet yeah. the rest of the experience q4 is, is the same. Yeah. yeah you're just more aware of it of your 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 tire of noise your windiness. And, yes exactly yeah. just to touch on charging speeds then so 66.6 the sign of the beast <laughs> <laughs> it's ah. an odd number so that's the size of the battery so from a standard wall box you're talking nine or ten hours it can also charge at up to 100 kilowatt hours per hour. <laughs> 100 kilowatt hours per hour, God, or just, you know, you're not, supposed, you're not supposed to collect, you're not supposed to forget the kilowatt hour. They will come for you. But when is they a kilowatt, <laughs> and when is a kilowatt hour? Kilowatt is when it's power output. Kilowatt hour is the measurement of the battery, as far okay. as I know, so. Right. So don't mix it up. So just don't come for me, please, I'm trying. <laughs> well, you have the devil on your side, so you're fine. <laughs> what will it do? Five to eighty percent. That's about like a half benchmark. an hour. About half an hour. Thank you for. That's the thank benchmark. You for <laughs> That's all anyone that really cares question. about. <laughs> now, yours obviously has a faster charging speed, and some of the new EVs coming out, I believe the Ionic Five can charge at like five hundred kilowatts. Eight. 800 it was something ridiculous so Someone you basically just have to point the charger right. at it and it's yeah. a full charge um but which as well like i mean yeah. at the moment 100 kilowatts is, is sufficient and even if you can find one to give you that you'll be doing well let's face it yeah and then the system can't handle it anyway <laughs> and that is the eqa on the road the eqa is nice i like it So, conclusion time. Yeah, it's always fun. They're both very nice, aren't they? They are, they're incredibly nice. Both they are. Them. Yeah. I think we've hit a real turning point in this EV journey and that the choice is wider than ever before. You can still have your premium fancy SUV and not be called a planet killer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, the Q4 e-tron is much better value than I expected. Yeah, the Q4 is very nice. It's refined, it's inoffensive, it's spacious, and it's really good to drive, much better than I thought it'd be. Now. Maybe this particular model is not exactly going to get the masses into EVs, but that entry price of 40,000 euro is a bit more manageable and a bit more tempting for just the general public. For sure, it's definitely going to let it compete in a yeah in the more mainstream space. I mean, even if you look at its stable mates in the Enyaq and the ID4, plus you get the bragging rights of those four rings. Very important. Very important. The EQA, on the other hand, I feel is going to appeal more to current Mercedes fans, certainly current GLA drivers. It is a yeah. hugely popular car. And like I said, I like the approach. You give the people what they want, and it's a game of two halves. And I won. <laughs> Maybe this time. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give us a like and share. Subscribe if you'd like to see more like it. And if you're in the market for either one of these vehicles or indeed any vehicle, do make sure to check out carsireland.ie where we have thousands of new and used models from over 1,200 trusted dealers. Yes, click the link. Click the link. See you next week. Bye.